What we're going to be looking at here is a bank reconciliation schedule here for a company. But what we're really going to be looking at are two specific areas here in this bank reconciliation schedule. Number one, the deposits in transit, and number two, the outstanding checks. And we're going to look at how we calculate both of these items here. So let's go down and look at our bank reconciliation schedule. So this is what we have to do. We're, uh, we've got two ways we can look at this bank reconciliation. And this is first through the bank statement here, the balance per the bank statement. The company has a certain cash amount here based on the bank statement. And what we have to determine here is the correct cash balance for the company here. Because the bank statement doesn't include uh, some items here that have to be added and subtracted to come up with the correct cash balance or we can look at the balance per the depositors books or the company's books here and that would have a certain cash balance here and again at this is at the end of the month that we're going to be looking at and then there would be some additions and subtractions to that uh, to the depositors books or the company's books to determine the correct cash balance but what we were going to do in this uh, video here is we're just going to concentrate on the balance per the bank statement here and we're going to concentrate on two areas here the deposit deposits in transit and outstanding checks. So let's just look at this balance per the bank statement here. And in this case it's in 731 the end of the month. The bank statement says the company has $17,300. And what we have to do is we are going to have to add some deposits in if you're going to reconcile this bank statement here, these are the items that you have to include here. You have to add deposits in transit, and in this case we're going to determine it to be $5,700. And then you'd have to add undeposited receipts of cash on hand. In this case we're just going to assign it to a zero mark because we're not going to do any calculating here. And then we'd have to add back any bank errors that understate the bank balance here. Again, zero amount. And then you would be subtracting out here some outstanding checks and we're going to determine that to be $2,200 that we have to subtract here. And then we'd also be subtracting some bank er errors that overstate the bank balance. Again, we're just assigning it here to zero since we're not going to do any calculating for that here. And then uh, based on our net amount here, summing, adding, and subtracting our amounts here from the beginning cash balance here per the bank statement of $17,300. We're going to come up with a correct cash balance here for the company to be $20,800. But what we're going to uh, be looking at here is these deposits in transit, how we calculate those, and our outstanding checks, how we would calculate those. So let's first go and look at our definitions here. So here for our deposits in transit, those are the end of month deposits of cash on the company or the depositors books in one month here or in the current month but they're going to re be received by the bank in the following month so they the bank hasn't received these yet and they haven't recorded the any of these deposits here so we consider those deposits in in transit here and then for outstanding checks those are written by the depositor or the company but do not clear the bank until the next month here and for this example all the receipts of payments are made by check. So let's go back here to our bank reconciliation schedule. So here we're going to have this bank statement. At the end of the month here we have a cash balance of $17,300. And then uh, again we're going to be look at we're going to go ahead here and we're going to calculate these deposits in transit and we're going to uh, and we're going to be adding those here to the beginning cash balance and then we're going to be subtracting those outstanding checks here and we're going to calculate those and then we're going to come up with this correct cash balance so let's go ahead and do our ca show you how to do the calculations here for the deposits in transit and those outstanding checks for our deposits in transit here. Let's go up there and look at it. So we have our deposits in transit here. This is how we calculate it. We take the deposits per the books here. Well, what we're going to do here is let's go up and we're going to be looking at our results here for July here. So what we're going to be looking at is our deposits per the bank here of $9,000 and then our deposits here per our books here, the company's books of $11,620. So let's look at how we calculate these deposits in transit here. So we have the deposits per the books here of 11620 That's showing up here. And then we have our deposits here per the bank here of $9,000 showing up here. Now we would subtract out our deposits in transit here as of 
the end of the month here of 630. So let's just say those all cl uh, cleared out here. So those we take off our bank reconciliation from the previous month here. Add, that was the deposits and transits here. There's $3,080 here. So we uh, say we've all those were included here for the month of July. They all made it through here. So now we would take this the difference here, the $9,000 per the bank here, we subtract out these deposits and transits from the previous month of $3,080, and we come up with, well, the total amount here would be $5,920. Now, that would be a positive amount here, but we have to subtract those out here because the deposits are mailed and received, so uh, we don't include those anymore here. So we subtract the $5,920 from the deposits here per the books here of $11,620, and our deposits in transit here, that's what would be in transit here, 731, at the end of the month would be $5,700. Okay, so let's just go back to our bank reconciliation schedule here. So the deposits in transit, those are the ones that haven't cleared the bank yet, or haven't made it to the bank yet, that is 5700 So the next thing we have to look at here is these outstanding checks, and those are the amount that we're going to be subtracting here. So let's look at how we'd calculate those. So going up to our outstanding checks here. And again, we have to work off our results here, 7-1 through 7-31. And this is where we would have those checks here, the checks that are recorded here per the bank of $8,000, and then the ones that are recorded here per the books here of $6,200. So let's go look at how we uh, calculate our outstanding checks. So the checks written per the book here, $6,200. That comes off our results here for July of $6,200. And then the checks that cleared the bank here on $731 um, at the end of the month here was $8,000. And those are per the bank here, $8,000. That comes off our schedule. Now the outstanding checks here uh, for $630. Now if we go down here again to our uh, bank reconciliation here, we'll see that we have had outstanding checks here on 630 at the end of the month here of $4,000. And going back here to our outstanding checks, now we assume that for this July period all those checks here have cleared. So we would subtract, they're all cleared through the bank here. So we track the $4,000 here outstanding checks from the previous month, 630, from our checks that cleared the bank here in 731 of $8,000. And we're going to get $4,000 as a positive amount here. But we would be subtracting that, that subtotal here that we got of $4,000. We'll be uh, subtracting those checks written are written and cleared here on 731 that $4,000 amount here. We'd be subtracting that here from the checks written per the books here of $6,200 and we're going to get our outstanding checks here for the period here on, at the end of the month, 731 at $2,200. Uh, just assuming that all these outstanding checks from the previous month here have been uh, collected again here uh, for July. So let's go back down to our bank reconciliation schedule. So again, we had all these, we had our balances here that we came up with. We had our deposits and transit of 5700 and then we'd be we'd, we'd be adding that here to the balance for the bank statement and then we'd be subtracting here these outstanding checks for 2200 and then the correct cash balance here per the bank statement comes up to be $20,000 eight hundred dollars. 